The Man with the Yin Yang Eyes, Episode 10. After settling the matter of Martin and Adam, Mr. Simmons decided to stay in his hometown for a few more days. Taking the opportunity to follow Mr. Simmons, I also had a few days of leave available, so I took time off to stay with him. The people in this town seemed to appreciate Mr. Simmons. During the few days he stayed in his hometown, people invited him to have a meal with them, but most of them were rejected by Simmons. One day, a middle-aged man named Anderson invited Mr. Simmons to come to his house for dinner. Mr. Simmons immediately agreed. At the moment, my family can only treat you to a meal of soup and a little wine like this, hope you don't mind. Oh my god, why did you say that? Longtime friends are happy to see each other. Why are you so formal? I am not used for that. I heard Mr. Simmons said in his youth. When Mr. Simmons was still living in the town of Lakeville, Mr. Simmons and Mr. Anderson were once very close friends. They haven't seen each other for a long time. If you don't criticize this meager meal, I'm happy. Come on, let's have a drink together. The other guy also has a drink with us two old friends. Okay, let's have a glass of wine, we haven't had a drink together in a long time. Gregory, don't be shy, Mr. Anderson is a good friend of mine. The two of them have seen each other for a long time, so they seem very happy, and Mr. Anderson is also very enthusiastic about me. Hey man, I remember I had a job before, so I came to this town one day, even though I couldn't see you at that time, your house is still very spacious, why is it now like this? So? Mr. Simmons told me that in the past, Mr. Anderson's family was very well off, one of the wealthiest households in town. Did something happen? And your son, where is he? I remember the boy, he was good at everything, and he worked hard to do business. Why are you the only one who eats meals every day like this? It's a long story. My son is indeed a hard worker, the previous property was all built by him. But unfortunately, he has not been a normal person anymore. When listening to Mr. Simmons asked about his situation, Mr. Anderson could only sigh. It seems his son is up to something. Oh? Isn't your son normal? Can you tell me what your son's problem is? As soon as Mr. Anderson talked about his son's condition, Mr. Simmons was also quite surprised. Mr. Simmons then asked what's wrong with his son. Mr. Anderson began telling his son's story. Mr. Anderson said about a year ago, his son had received a job leveling an ancient tomb with a group of young men in the village, work for one day and earn decent money, until something terrible happens. Hey David, let's have a few glasses of wine when you're done today. We haven't had it in a long time. Okay. Don't get drunk today, or else you cannot go home. David is the name of Anderson's son. One day, like every other day, he and his colleagues continued their familiar work. While everyone was concentrating on their work, suddenly David cried out. Everyone thought he had dug something. If anyone had noticed at that time, there was a very faint black smoke where David was standing. David still didn't understand what was happening when black smoke enveloped him. Then gradually his consciousness blurred, his eyes closed. Then David fell to the ground. The fall made a rather loud noise that made his colleagues jump all over. David. After regaining their senses and realizing that the noise was caused by David's fall, the people working with him panicked and called out his name and ran to see what had happened to him. Then they quickly brought David home. Oh my God, you're awake. Are you all right? Suddenly falling over there, scared us to death. They were all brothers and sisters, so when David got into trouble, they quit their jobs to stay and look after him, until he woke up. Who are you? Why are you standing here staring at me? But strangely, when David woke up, he was asking strange questions, he didn't seem to recognize his friends. Are you kidding us? 
Don't tell me you'll lose your memory after falling with a bang? David's tone was also very different from before, but people didn't pay much attention and only focused on David's question. The people around him thought he was joking with them. We don't know each other. What's the joke? Where is this? Why does it look so weird? What year is this year? Everyone was surprised by David's reaction and words. From the moment he woke up, he was like a different person. Oh man, indeed, you're not normal after falling. Follow us to the hospital to check it out. I told you that we don't know each other. What's the point of pulling and pulling like that? And what the hell is a hospital? David seems to get very angry when someone touches him. His attitude looks like a different person. Son, please stop. What's wrong with you? After a while of fighting, David took the broom in the house and chased everyone out. At this moment, Mr. Anderson saw it and rushed to intervene, as well as ask what happened to his son. Who are you, old man? How dare you claim to be my father? Weirdly, David couldn't even recognize his own father. David, don't draw anymore. Hurry up and have dinner with your father. Take it slow. From that day on, everyone around thought that David was crazy. He locked himself in the house all day, didn't brush his hair, wash his face or shower at all, didn't even bother to eat or drink. He just worked hard at painting and writing poetry. David dropped out of school and went to work to earn money very early, so that sometimes he didn't even realize how to write poetry and drawings. But, strangely, he knows that stuff since he went crazy. He also writes beautiful calligraphy. Once, when Mr. Anderson brought a meal into his son's room but accidentally stepped on a painting on the ground, David was outraged. He picked up a wooden stick and hit his father directly. Things don't stop there. One day he went out to buy pens and ink, and when someone accidentally touched or asked a few questions, he was also chased and beat them mercilessly. Which is compensation for medicine, is the money to buy paper, pens, and ink. Mr. Anderson is old, and he can't make money. Usually, David is the breadwinner in the house. He's been like that for a year, so Mr. Anderson's house has gone downhill. I don't know why my poor son became like this. I've been feeling very miserable for the past year. Where is your son now? Mr. Anderson couldn't hold back his tears as he told the story of what happened to his son. To keep him out of trouble, one day, I put sleeping pills on his food and locked him in a log house. Take me there to see how your son is doing. I must see if I can help. Mr. Simmons asked Mr. Anderson to take us to his son's cage. Mr. Anderson agreed and took us to the back of the house where there was a log cabin where his son was being kept. Here he is, man. He's in there. After arriving, Mr. Simmons approached the window to look inside, and I followed. I saw the inside of the cramped, gloomy room covered with writing and paintings, on the wall and the ground, whatever. And there was a man who looked like a forest man reading a book inside. His clothes were disheveled, his hair a mess. Gregory, take off your glasses and see if you can see anything. Mr. Simmons watched for a moment, then asked me to take off my glasses and take a look. I reached up and took off my glasses. As soon as I used the yin-yang eyes to look inside, I did not see David but saw a man dressed in weird costumes with long hair. He looks like a man from the feudal age, but maybe I should not take the word people to describe him. He was vague, pale face and had white eyes, much like a ghost in movie teaser things I've sometimes seen before, certainly not must be human. Inside there is a person, but not. Looks like a ghost from the feudal age, well, maybe this is taking the body to resurrect. It is possible that while this David was digging to fill the grave, he accidentally dug his place of residence did not suit him, and was possessed by him. The ghost has taken over his body. Mr. Simmons slowly analyzed the problem, 
which was probably also explaining it to me. That guy has taken over David's body for too long. We can't capture him right away. We have to prepare a little. Mr. Simmons said that because the ghost of the feudal age had occupied David's body for too long, it was impossible to expel him immediately, or if it was too urgent, it would hurt David's soul. Hey man, what time does he usually wake up? After reviewing David's situation, we went back inside the house. At this time, Mr. Simmons began asking for details about David. Over the past year or so, he usually sleeps during the day and wakes up at night, but in the last few months, it has been able to wake up in the afternoon, well, it's been taking over your son's body for so long that the living part has weakened, it's gradually no longer so afraid of the sun. I listened to them talk back and forth, and I understood the situation briefly. That means that David is getting weaker and weaker. If left for a long time, it will be dangerous. He is so lucky to meet Mr. Simmons in time. This may be due to their luck, or it may be that Mr. Simmons foresaw. The living part weakened, so the time that the ghost took over his son's body became more and more close. In the daytime, it has to go to its grave to avoid the sun, but lately, it has been able to adapt. At noon the sunlight was so strong that the ghost couldn't stand it. If it didn't get out at that time and return to its grave but still tried to stay active in David's body, it would suffer. It's almost noon now. We can move. First I have to prepare a bit. Gregory, I ask you for this. Yes, I am listening. You go to my parking place, get me this, this and this. It is not clear that Mr. Simmons always carries those things, or is it because he's already prepared for this? I didn't think much or delay, lest I miss a good time to capture the ghost, so I rushed to get something for Mr. Simmons. At the same time, Mr. Simmons told Mr. Anderson to prepare one of David's shirts, and then he drew a spell circle on the shirt. He took this with him and stored it carefully. He would use it at a moment later. This shirt is used to prevent the ghost from re-entering David's body. I took the shirt and carefully held it. Be very careful and follow the plan. You can rest assured. Don't worry. There won't be any mistakes. After giving me a few more things, Mr. Simmons leaves. I don't know where he went either. I carefully arranged Mr. Simmons delivered, then brought a chair to David's cage and sat there waiting. I sat and waited for a while. According to Mr. Simmons, I had to wait there until the sun was at its highest, then the plan would be in motion. I looked at the sky, and when I felt the sun's intense heat, I thought it was time. I jumped up from my chair and went to the window to look inside to see the situation. At this point, in bed, David was completely asleep. He slept soundly and didn't move or make any noise. I stared at the sleeping body on the bed. Just then, I saw the feudal ghost come out of David's body. Exactly as Mr. Simmons said, when the sun is hot, it's time for the ghost to go to the grave to avoid it. I saw the ghost get out of David's body and go straight out. From the time I lifted the chair to this place, I no longer wore my glasses, so I could clearly see the ghost. Even though I knew the ghost could pass through me, I instinctively moved aside, and the corner of my eye saw it go through the window I was standing in to get out. As soon as the other feudal ghost walked for a while, the time that Mr. Simmons said had come too. I called Mr. Anderson to help, and then we went inside to place the shirt that Mr. Simmons drew a spell on David. He still didn't react at all. Just as we finished dressing David, I heard a loud bang coming outside. It sounded like something exploded or something heavy fell. I rushed outside to check. It turned out that the noise just now was caused by the feudal ghost wanting to go out, but unfortunately, it was pushed back inside by a great force. I stood watching for a while and saw that the feudal ghost tried to get out several times but couldn't. 
There was always some force stopping it and pushing it back in. I guess it's because Mr. Simmons has prepared something outside. The ghost kept trying a few more times but couldn't get out. After repeating it several times in a row, I saw that futile ghost began to panic and worried. It must be not understanding what is happening. Still, it didn't give up. But no matter what it did, the futile ghost couldn't get out, so it changed its mind and flew back to David's place. Before going out, Mr. Simmons gave me a few things, including a talisman that made it impossible for the feudal ghost to see me. I saw the ghost change direction and fly back, so I ran after it. Feudal ghost wanted to re-enter David's body, but David was given the enchanted shirt that Mr. Simmons prepared so that the ghost couldn't enter, and it was knocked out again. I smiled triumphantly and took out the coins that Mr. Simmons gave me, held them in the palm of my hand, and then threw them at the feudal ghost. At that moment, the ghost seemed to notice me. It headed in the direction I was standing in and rushed towards me. I have a weapon in my hand, so I'm not afraid of it. In addition, I also have experience in fighting ghosts before, so I did not worry and calmly waited for it. I clamped the coin between two fingers, then hurled at feudal ghost. Each time it seemed to be very painful and much more exhausted. I fought the ghost with both hands, causing it to fly around to dodge. But I see it, and it can't see me, so how can it dodge my attack? I beat him up with a few enchanted coins. Finally, it was distraught and didn't know where to hide, so it flew back out into the yard. I also ran outside. As soon as I stepped out, I immediately closed the door and taped the talisman on it, in case he re-entered and tried to enter David again. Feudal ghost now panicked and flew around in the yard. He could neither get out nor go back inside David's place. At this time, the sun was very high. The harsh sunlight shone down on the yard and shone through the ghost. Black smoke began to rise. Under the sun so bright, even living people like me almost burned, let alone a ghost like it. It didn't take long. The ghost gradually disappeared under the intense sunlight. It disappeared and became plumes of black smoke that spread across the yard. That black smoke still struggled a bit, like the last breath of the ghost remaining. After that, Black smoke spread throughout the space and gradually dissipated in the air. What's up? Is everything all right? Was that young man fighting against the feudal ghost got injured? When the black smoke dissipated, the gate opened, and Mr. Simmons stepped inside. I saw a charm taped to the door. Maybe it was the spell that prevented the feudal ghost from flying out. I am fine, and everything is going very smoothly. These coins are good. They are more useful than bullets. I feel incredibly excited. I beat the ghost, and I won a fight that made me proud. Dad. Oh my son, do you recognize me? By the time we walked in, David was awake and recognized his father. The father and son shook hands, hugged each other, and looked very happy. Mr. Simmons, my dear friend Simmons, you saved my son's life. How can I repay this favor? David seems to be weak, but he is good enough sober again. Mr. Anderson profusely thanked Mr. Simmons. Okay, it is no big deal. Please don't give me your little money left. Keep it and take good care of your son, so it's like thanking me. Mr. Simmons refused to accept the money Anderson offered. He said that as long as your father and son lived well, he would be happy. Mr. Simmons, your exorcism is amazing. On the way back home, I paid tribute to Mr. Simmons. I am not exaggerating to flatter him. All are my sincere words for Mr. Simmons. To me, he is truly an admirable master. This is just a small part of the cases I have dealt with. I have many more interesting things. Do you want to learn? Today Mr. Simmons seemed very happy. 
Perhaps because he was able to help his longtime friend, he felt happy. This time Mr. Simmons even asked me if I wanted to learn something from him. I want, of course, I want to learn. But do you really want to teach me? I have had this wish for a long time, but I did not know how to express it to Mr. Simmons. Of course, this time I couldn't pass up such a good opportunity. I immediately expressed my joy at this proposal of Mr. Simmons.